were walking it for four, 40 years until they all died off because he just didn't embrace them for their rebellion. He let them die off before they could go to the promised land. This is Bible, church. This mentality that people teach in this modern day Christian world drives me nuts. But you know what? Aren't we grateful that we can see the real story? That we cannot buy into all these traditional ideas that no matter what you do, God's going to embrace you when the Word of God says the opposite. I want to be embraced by God. I want to be recognized by God. I want to be intimate with God. And so it might be a good idea to follow His Word instead of my attitude. I'm going to follow His Word instead of my mind. It goes on to say in verse 21, <clears throat> if you'll make this decision, if you'll do what you say, and you'll go to war, and we'll go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he has driven out all of his enemies before him. Who's the enemy of God? We, ooh, ooh, I'm sorry, I'm having fun. We got to drive out some demons. We got some battles to do. We got some souls to win. We've got some Bible studies to teach. We've got some lives to help be put back together by God's spirit. We've got some things that need to be done. We got some addictions to break. We've got some power to give. We've got some hope to bring. We've got some things to go to war for in this city. Some of you are there. You all must be tired, but the rest of you are doing good. So if you'll do that, if you'll do that, verse 22, and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterwards you shall return guiltless. If you do what you said you're going to do, if you keep your deal with God, then you can come back to this place where you said that you would come after you did what you said you'd do, and you will have no guilt to come back here and inhabit this land. It's the same thing in the spirit. If we'll go do the things that God has ordained for us to do in this community, then we can operate guiltless. We can go home. You know, when I've done what I'm supposed to do, there's nothing wrong with going home and watching a movie with my wife. Nothing wrong with kicking back because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing and then I go do something else, I feel guilty and I am guilty. So I'm looking for a church that's going to move forward and say, I'm ready to go to war. Remember the sermon? Get ready for the fight. Because uh, the, 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 the Lord that we serve is looking for us to clear out the enemies. To clear out the enemies for him. Because that's the way he has it ordained. Goes on to say, before the Lord, you're guiltless before the Lord and before Israel, and this shall be your possession before the Lord. So you got to understand, in the scripture, they just didn't get it because they wanted it. They just didn't make a deal and do whatever they wanted. They had to follow God's will. And they had to do what he said, which is to go and keep their promise. They had to go and go to war. Is war comfortable? Well, guess what? It's, it's not comfortable for you to sit across someone and teach your first Bible study. You're nervous. You're scared. But that's your fight. That's your battle. That's your responsibility. I, I'm doing mine. I'm teaching Bible studies. I'm teaching people the word. Raise your hand if I ever taught you a Bible study, including on Tuesdays here at the church. Raise your hand if I ever taught you a Bible study. Sister Crystal, I need to teach you a Bible study. T, I need to teach you a Bible study. And anybody else who didn't raise I need to teach you a Bible study. There's only two or three people in here, and they're all new. Everybody else has been taught a Bible study. Understand, church, the world wants to teach this backwards idea that there's nothing you got to do. You just kick back, call yourself a Christian, and it's all good. Well... <laughs> Man and flesh has gotten to that point because it's comfortable. But war is not comfortable. Battle is not comfortable. And I promise you, when you sit across a person teaching them a Bible study, that's a battle because the devil is not okay with you teaching somebody something that's going to bring them into an intimate relationship with God. He's not okay with that and he is going to fight it. 
I can name names all over this room where people when miraculous things happen in their lives, powerful things, things happen in their lives, and immediately after, the enemy starts fighting. Starts attacking. Things start happening. Immediately after something great happens in your life through God. He is not just going to sit back and relax. Because he knows his time is short. He knows his time is short. He tells them if you'll do what you're supposed to do, you'll be fine. But he says if you don't. Here's where we're going to end because this is where we ended last week. And I'm going to make it a little simpler than I did last week because I already preached last week. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned. Let's just call us, well, I don't know if I can use that word. Let's just call it how we see it. If you don't keep your deal with God, you've committed a sin. If you haven't been willing to go to war, but you just want the blessing, because I know all of y'all prayed for God to give you stuff. I know all of y'all prayed for God to take care of something in your life, but have you gone to war? Come on, somebody. But have you been willing to take up arms? What, a, what is an arm? What are the arms that he's talking about? How about the full armor of God? Are you willing to take up your arms to go to war, or do you just want what you want? without any effort. Ooh, this is a tough one today, isn't it? We just preaching direct today, but that's all right. Sometimes we need that. Behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Your sin will not go unnoticed before God. He will see it, and he will treat you accordingly. How do I know? The Bible says you will be rewarded according to your works. Oh, but the modern day world wants to stay all away from works. They don't want to talk about nothing about works because you're saved by grace through faith and nothing else matters. That's a lie from the devil. Because in James chapter 2 it says it clearly, can faith alone save you? And the answer is no. He said faith without works is dead. If I was to ask you if you had faith, I bet you everybody, oh come on. If I was to ask you if you had faith, everybody raise your hand. And then I would ask, but do you have works? And I'm not talking about, you know, walking old ladies across the street. I'm talking about works of God. What are the first three works of God you have to do to be saved? Huh? Nope. Repent. Get baptized. And receive the Holy Ghost. Those are the first three walks of faith, works of faith you have to do. But after you do those things and now you're a child of God, give me some other works of faith. Prayer. That's a work of faith. Why is that having faith? Well, you're talking to something that's, there's, there's nobody there, but you're talking to an unseen, invisible God and you're saying, hey, I need your help. It takes faith to do that. To pray. What else? Give me another a work of faith. Of, of, of God, a work of God, not works of man. Huh? Reading your Bible, that's, that's a work of God. What else? Fasting. That's a work of God. Man, who's fasting today? Ooh-wee, praise the Lord. Isn't that fun? Fasting is a work of God. What else? Bringing people to church. That's a work of God. Teaching a Bible study. That's a work of God. Paying tithes is a work. Go ahead, brother. He said it. I didn't even have to say it. I wasn't even thinking about it. Paying your tithes is a work of God. There are works of God that you have to do once you become saved. And I'll tell you what. The more intimate you are with God, the more you love God, the easier it is. See, I love my wife. My wife asked me today, you know, I want to go home and take a nap. She says, well, uh, I'm tired. I want to take a nap. Can you go pick up Jakey? I'm like, sure I will. Because I love my wife. I want her to get a nap. And I ain't going to say I didn't want one. I could use one right about now. But I love, it's just not hard for me to do it. She's like, why don't you do that for me? <laughs> He'll get there, don't worry. And I know she's going to pay for it because when football season comes back around, she's going to have to do a lot more. Than that. So I'm going to try to do more now to kind of balance it out. But it's not hard to do things. You know, I love my kids. I was thinking about this weekend. We went to Albuquerque last weekend and we're doing all this stuff. There's all kinds of things I would have liked to have done for me. 
I like to go to the gun shop. Shop. I like to go to shooting range and shoot calipers. They got an indoor shooting range. You know, there's a little fishing pond. I could have gone. I have, there's fishing ponds in Albuquerque where they they, they stock them, and you can just you know, drop a live shoot. Got me a fish. You know, there's all kinds of things I would have liked to have done for me. But you know what? We do things for our kids. Why? Because I love my kids. I want my kids to have experiences and to do stuff that, that's fun that they'll always remember. It's not, it's not difficult to do things for someone that you love. So one of the things we're trying to do in this church is to try to get you to fall so much in love with God, to be so intimate with God. That's why we have awesome worship services. And that's why we have people come up and pray and we encourage it because they want you to fall in love with Jesus Christ. And then all this stuff will be easy. I won't even have to preach it that hard. I could just say, hey, listen, this is what we need to do. And if we really love Jesus the way we're supposed to, I wouldn't even have to say it again. On that note, let's stand. Let's stand. Let's, let's cultivate that idea. If you, if, you're, if you're in love, you fall in love with God, you won't have to worry about getting caught. Because, see, I don't cheat on my wife because I love my wife. I don't get caught up in things I shouldn't be. I don't hang out with a bunch of single men. I don't go around and, and I don't have a bunch of female friends. Because that, that's how you get caught up. And I'm not going to get caught cheating on my wife because I love my wife. So I don't cheat on my wife. So when you fall in love with something, you ain't got to worry about getting caught. Because it becomes more important to you than the other things. Baby, if you would come up here. I'm going to have you play a little bit. I want to give the church an opportunity. We, I'm feeling, I, I only do altar calls on Wednesdays when I feel it. You know, you, you don't have altar calls just to get everybody up here. Uh, on Sunday, we generally do because Sundays tend to be a more uh, demonstrative, powerful service. Uh, this is more like a more casual setting, even though it doesn't feel like it in the beginning. Praise God. Uh, we got like... 50, 60 people in here. I'm blown away by what's happening in this church. God is awesome. But tonight I'm feeling a call for you to come to this place and leave something at the altar if you need to. Uh, uh, what was your name again? Uh, Zelda. Um, you know, I want you to come. I'd like to see you get filled with the Holy Ghost today. You need power from God. And God wants to give you His Spirit. So I want you to come down. Uh, I want this young man playing football. I want him to know there's more than just football in this world. There is a God who loves you and wants to bless you and touch you. And I want to give that opportunity for you to come if you so desire. These altars are open right now. Why don't we bring some people down who already love God, who are already intimate with God, to lead the way in worship right now so that God could seek us out. Instead of us always looking for God, we can worship God and have Him be looking for us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. make a deal with you right now about my repentance. I'm going to maintain my repentance, God. I'm going to keep my deal so that I don't have to worry about my sin finding me out.
Your place.